During the endoscopic examination, carefully locate the possible bleeder. No active bleeder is initially observed. Gently flush with water to remove blood clots and to obtain a clear endoscopic field. Active bleeding is found at the esophageal gastric junction. This is the most difficult area because the endoscopist has limited space for performing the variceal ligation. Keeping the endoscopic view clear when there is active bleeding can be problematic. In this situation, the endoscopist can rotate the endoscope using the transparent cap to compress the varices to decrease the blood flow. After confirming the location of the target varices, keep the bleeder in the center of the ligating device and suctioned to fill the cap. After the rubber band is released, flush the lumen to confirm that the bleeding has been controlled. Observe any possible esophageal injury associated with the overtube while withdrawing the endoscope. Before the endoscopic procedure, prophylactic antibiotic is administered. In the setting of elective variceal ligation, sedative agents such as midazolam was administrated. During the endoscopic examination, we should look at previous ligated area and check for the presence of gastric varicose vein. The ligation procedure starts from the most distal varicose vein and moves up towards the mouth. Once the varicose vein was ligated, the endoscope should not advance distal to the ligated area because this may cause band dislodgement. We usually place four to six bands in one session and repeat the procedure every two to four weeks. Patients are taught to resume soft diet after the procedure and sucralfate or proton pump inhibitors are given to facilitate the healing of procedure-induced esophageal ulcers.